praise and we say thank you so much for what you are doing in our midst, what you have done, what you're about to do. We just give you the glory and we give you the praise. We thank you for giving us this day. I ask and I pray, Lord, you quicken your word and make it real and relevant to every one of us. Once again, I pray, Lord, for a fresh knowledge to be upon all of us, to hear your word, to receive your word. I'm asking you to think through my thoughts, speak through my vocal cords, let your word go forth. Let it accomplish that which you said to accomplish in every one of our hearts and lives. I oh, will be careful to give you all the glory and the praise. And we want to say thank you that you always confirm your word with signs, wonders, and miracles. I commit the ministry of the word of God to your hands. Be thou exalted. Be thou magnified. Have thine own way in our midst. And we give you the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, Leviticus chapter 23. Many have been recently asking questions or been calling to the church or um, asking questions about these fall feasts. And uh, um, so today's message is going to try to address some of these questions that um, some of you all have been asking or calling in or inquiring. And, and, and I'm not really going to really go into detail, but I will be primarily talking about the Feast of Trumpets, mainly. All right? So the Word of God says here in verse 1, And, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto, and say unto them concerning the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Even these are my feasts. Now I want you to notice a couple of things in this scripture verse I just read. That the word of God is saying, God says, the feasts of the Lord. In other words, they're His feasts. All right. Now, I'm talking about all the biblical feasts. They really technically belong to him. It's all about him, yeah. right? And this word feast is a, comes from a Hebrew word, moed, means appointment or appointed time. Or you could put it another way, God's appointed time. So basically, it's, it's God's appointed times. And, and verse 2 send, ends like this, even these are my feasts. And if you continue reading, it talks about all the seven biblical feasts, the spring feasts and the fall feasts. Now, you'll, you'll find in your reading the Bible, in particular when you come to the New Testament, the, the New Testament will say the Jews' feast. It, 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 you know, more than once it will refer to the Jews' feast, but I believe when it says the Jews' feast it's because the, something is wrong. When I say something is wrong, they've gone off and done their own thing. Yeah. Right? This, 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 the scripture says in the Bible that there'll come a time when God will turn their feast into mourning. Um, God's feasts were meant to be a time of rejoicing, uh, connecting with God, presenting themselves to God. Um, the males were to show up three times a year with their offerings and, and just present themselves to God with their offerings and position themselves so God can bless. And God wants to meet with his people and bless his people. Yeah. It's his appointments. Um, so when the scripture refers to the Jews' feast, it, it's kind of like in a negative connotation. It says like, you know, it's no longer God's. Like something has changed. Something is, God is not being honored the way he ought to and the way he's supposed to. Yes. And they're doing their own thing. And, you know, so again, somebody who doesn't understand the context will come along us as well. You know, some born again believers will say, well, um, we really shouldn't, well, as Christians, we really shouldn't be paying attention to those feasts because they belong to the Jews. No, 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 no. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says they belong to God. Amen. And and we can see in this particular verse, God is saying to Moses that I want you to talk to my people about my feasts, my appointments, my divine appointments. Mm -hmm. Do you see? Uh, uh, they're important to God. And so in this particular verse you can see uh some words here where it says um to pro you shall proclaim to be holy convocations the feasts are meant to be proclaimed yes. amen yes. hallelujah in other words announced proclaimed yes. right and, and 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 it says holy convocation the word holy convocation means like a dress rehearsal simply in english 
It's a dress rehearsal. In other words, all of God's feasts, biblical feasts, are really, if you put it simply, they're dress rehearsals. Mm -hmm. Now, if you ever had an opportunity to be in a play, or in a, a pageant, or, or some sort of performance, if you're a musician, you will practice and rehearse before you go and perform. I mean, if you ever take any, uh, if you ever taken royal conservatory music, and you ever sit for any exams, you will do lots of practicing before the day of the exam, because the day of the exam is really a performance day. Yes, sir. And you'll sit down and, and, and you'll, you'll perform and, and you'll be evaluated and you'll be marked mm -hmm. and, and things like that. So all of these holy convocations, all of these biblical feasts is really a dress rehearsal for the real thing that's coming. Now the New Testament tells us that Christ is the one that will fulfill all of these biblical feasts. Amen. It's really all about Him. Yes. And so the Word of God tells us that these divine appointments are appointments that God has ordained throughout the year and He's expecting His people to show up and present themselves because He wants to meet with His people. And these are appointments that are not to be missed. Right? And God is going to keep his appointment. He's going to show up. But if one fails to show up, they're the ones that will lose out. It, it's, these appointments are not like your dentist's appointment or your doctor's appointment. You know, um, before the modern technology for dentists, a lot of people did not look forward to going to the dentist. And even today with modern technology, some people uh, don't look forward to going to the dentist. I was listening to a preacher the other day. He was, he, was, he was expecting the rapture to show up by a certain time. So because he was expecting the, rap, the rapture to show up by a certain time, he kept on putting off his appointment with his dentist because he didn't want to do some work on his teeth. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like he put that off. But yeah... I was, I was listening to him the other day, he realized because the, the, the date that he thought that Jesus would come has come and gone, now he's gone and got the dental work. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, so you can put off your dental appointments, you can put off your doctor's appointments, you can put off your appointments with whosoever, and you can miss them. But to miss God's appointments is not a good thing, right? And you know, if you've got an important appointment to meet with a lawyer and the lawyer says, you know, the appointment's going to be on Tuesday at 1 o'clock and for some reason, whatever, you, th you thought it was Wednesday, you show up on Wednesday, he's doing something else on, on Wednesday. He, he's, he's probably not going to make himself available because he's, he's doing something else. It's your loss, yeah. right? It's your loss. So when, when God's people fail to show up when they're supposed to, it's their loss. Right? So earlier this year, we were sharing with you, those of you in the Bible studies, about how the calendars for this year has changed. And they change quite often. And what the, what the, the Jewish people do, um, they have a 19-year cycle. And they add an extra month seven times during that 19th, 19 year cycle, right? Seven times. They add in a extra month to make it instead of 12 months, 13 months. Now, God never told them to do that. God told them very clearly that um, he's, the book of Genesis says that he's given, when you go with me, if you want for a moment to Genesis chapter 1 uh, some familiar verses he says in verse 14 the Word of God says and God said let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs for seasons for days and years do you all see that all right um, so all the lights in the heavens that's the Sun the moon the stars the constellation they're there for a purpose and, and one of the reasons they're there for is so that we can know what time it is. Yeah. You're still with me? Mm -hmm. All right? And, and uh, 
the Jewish people have gone on and added an extra month when they weren't supposed to, right? And they were supposed to wait until for the spring equinox. They were supposed to wait until the spring equinox occurred, and that's when uh, the sun is in certain constellations, um, uh, and then wait for the next first new moon, and that will be the first. That will be Nisan one, and then start going forward. Well, well, this year. It was all off. Uh, the Jewish calendar did not wait until the spring equinox took place and then start counting the first biblical month, Nisan. They didn't wait for that. They went ahead and so therefore it, it occurred a month earlier than what it should have and that just throws the whole calendar off. So that's going to, because they're on a 19 uh, uh, year cycle and seven times during the 19th, the 19 years they add an extra month, that means seven times in the 19th cycle, it's going to be off. You still with me? So if it's off at the beginning, it's going to be off at the end. And therefore, I'm sharing with you that in particular, um, after when Jesus uh, rose again from the dead, between uh, he rose again from the dead and the, the destruction of the temple, which was 70 AD, Jesus was crucified around 33 AD, um, that the high priests were going into the temple on what they thought was Yom Kippur or the Day of Atonement and they were go because they were going in the wrong time Josephus, the historian, record, writes about this that they were pulling them out, pulling out the high priest's dead bodies yes. because they're going in at the wrong time right? you can't just show up in God's presence whenever you want to, when you want to and, and in particular with the Holy of Holies in the Old Testament times, the, the high priest was only allowed to go in on that particular day, the Day of Atonement. If he barged in there any other day, um, he wasn't coming out alive. Do you see? That's just the way it was. And so it's letting us know that God has his timing, his times. So because the time was off at the spring earlier this year, the fall is off. So the bottom line is the calendar is off by a month. So if you're following the Jewish calendar, they're saying that right now it's the month of Tishri, right? Tishri is the seventh month, right? Yeah. Right? And, and on September, um, September the 7th, they were, this past September 7th, they were saying it's Tishri 1, the first day of the seventh month, and the Jewish people celebrated their new year. They also celebrated the Rosh Hashanah and Feast of Trumpets. Those are just different names, right? Okay? And on Thursday, which was September the 16th, they celebrated the Day of Atonement. Hebrew is Yom Kippur, right? And next week, on the 21st of September will be the first day they'll be celebrating, which will be the 15th day of the month, they'll be celebrating uh, uh, the, the beginning of Feast of Tabernacles. Well, uh, so the calendar is off by a month, so really what should, be, what should have been happening is wait for the fall equinox to take place, then when the next new moon takes place, so the fall equinox happens to be next week, which is the end of summer, beginning of fall, yeah. that is on September the 22nd, yes. okay? The new moon after that, right, would be the first day of the seventh month for Tishri. But because their calendar's off, um, they're gonna say it's Sheshvan when it's really Tishri. Do you see? God didn't add an extra month. You could read the whole Bible. You will not find that God added an extra month. He did not add a 13th month. In the Bible, you won't find a, a, an Adar 2. All right? It's all off. So man's calendar is off, but God's calendar is still on. Okay? And even though man is off, God is still going to be doing whatever he's supposed to do at a certain time. He's not changing his calendar for man. You see, a man is with, without excuse because 
those who studied this, they know that the sun has to be in a certain constellation at a certain time. Then they know it's a spring equinox. Yeah. Likewise, the fall, right? So the stars tell the time, yeah. right? And they're consistent every year, right? The moon, the sun, all of that. So having said that, we can see when, when we, back in chapter four, one of verse 14 in the book of Genesis, it talks about seasons. This is not what you might think it is. It's not talking about summer, winter, spring, fall. That's not what it's about, right? So uh, don't make that mistake. It's, it's really all about the pointed times, okay? That God has ordained for his people, right? So if you, understand that, then we can go forward. Um, so really, the true feast of trumpets should be occurring next month in the month of, of October on the 7th and the 8th. Um, I'm giving you two days because normally the Jewish people in the old days before the new technology they would allow two days to see the sighting of the moon to know that it truly is a new moon. So the seventh and the eighth is really the real time for the Feast of Trumpets, right? Then, then um, so that's October the seventh and the eighth, and then October the 16th is going to be the true Day of Atonement. In other, in other words, Yom Kippur. If we are still here, if the Lord hasn't come for the church, that will be a day of pray, prayer and fasting. We will, we will honor that day of prayer and fasting. We'll start the night before. The Bible tells us that when it comes to the Day of Atonement, they're supposed to go on a 24-hour fast. And if you're able to, and if we're all still here on planet Earth, join us. That happens to be a Saturday. Amen? And it'll be from evening to evening, exactly what the Bible says. So the night before is the 15th. We normally have prayer meeting on a Friday night. We will, we will come to prayer meeting praying and fasting. And we'll, we'll pray and fast right through until the next day. All right? So I'm just giving you a heads up just in case we're here because you all have been asking these, these questions. Okay? Uh, um, uh, the day of Feast of Trumpets, which is uh, October the 7th, uh, that's a weekday, Thursday. We're not planning to do anything special. Um, um, if you want to take that day off, go ahead. It is, a you know, it is a holy convocation, but we won't be having any special service um, for that. All right? All right? Just, again, we're just answering some of your questions. And then, um, beginning of October the 21st, that will be the true Feast of Tabernacles, and that will go for seven days. And then the eighth day, there's also a biblical holiday there, too, on the 28th. Um, we'll see which way the Lord leads. All right? Okay? But nothing really planned for Feast of Trumpets. If we're here, David Thomas we will do some prayer and fasting, and we'll see about the Feast of Trump, uh, Tabernacles. Feast, fe Feast of Tabernacles, the true Feast of Tabernacles, will be up beginning October the 21st, okay? All the way to the 27th, that's the seven days. And then there's always the eighth day, which will go to the 28th. All right, and then again to just back up again, um, Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur is October the 16th, day of prayer and fasting. Okay, and um, the day of uh, Feast of Trumpets is October the 7th. Everybody got that? Okay, so sharing that just to, to answer some of the questions that folks have been asking. Um, all right, I, I trust that helps. Um, if, uh, if you do have any further questions, just, just uh, let us know. But we'll, we'll, we'll continue on this, all right? So back to Leviticus chapter 23. We're going back there for a moment. Let's, let's talk about some of these scriptures here for a moment, all right? Um, You have to understand this. 
there's seven biblical feasts, right? There's Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, Pentecost. You still with me, saints? Yes. Okay. Oh, actually, it's probably easier for me to do it this way. Let's hold it up this way. All right? Yeah. Okay. Can you see this? Yeah. Seven, right? Okay. Passover. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Feast of Unleavened Bread. Yes. First Fruits. Yes. Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Feast of Trumpets. Yes. Yom Kippur, which is Day of Atonement. Feast of Tabernacles. Yes. Seven. All right? Glory. Jesus has fulfilled Passover. Feast of Unleavened Bread. Yes. First Fruits. Yes. Pentecost. Yes. These last three feasts of four feasts have not been fulfilled yet. All right? They have not been fulfilled. Now look at it this way. The seven biblical feasts are like bookends. Right? Passover is one day. Then you have seven days of unleavened bread. Right? Yeah. Bookending, right? The way the biblical feasts end is um, Feast of Tabernacles is also how many days? Seven. And it ends with one day on the eighth day. Do you see that? Okay, the book ended. Okay, one, seven, seven, one. All right? Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. And what's interesting is the Feast of Unleavened Bread um, is on the 15th, which is the full moon, right? Right? Feast of Tabernacles begins on a full moon. Yes? Yes, sir. Come okay? On. Feast of Trumpets is new moon. It's the only one that's a new moon. But you see, bookend, full moon, full moon. Yeah. Right? And Feast of Trumpets is new moon, which is interesting. Right? So I, I hope that helps. So let's talk a little bit about that. Because it helps us when we do to understand. All right? So, um, the last three fall feasts, Feast of Trumpets speaks of repentance. Yom Kippur, which is Day of Atonement, speaks of redemption. And the Feast of Tabernacles uh, speaks of rejoicing. They all will occur in that prophetic order. They have to, because before you can uh, have redemption, you've got to repent. Yes. All right? Before you can rejoice, you're going to have to have redemption and repentance. Yes. Did, did you see that? Repentance, redemption, rejoice. Mm -hmm. Right? That, if you, again, if you, we don't have time to read the whole thing, but I encourage you to read the whole chapter of uh, Leviticus chapter 23. When it starts talking about the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days, it talks about another day after that, which is a holy convocation, the eighth day. And that day in Hebrew is called uh, uh, Shemini at Zaret. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. That speaks of eternity. Amen. Right? So what, what, what do we got? Repentance, redemption, rejoicing, eternity. Mm -hmm. All right? They are going to be fulfilled at some future day. All right? Amen. So today we will talk a little bit about the Feast of Trumpets because if we want to, uh, well, that's not the um, true Feast of Trumpets. I know the Jews have celebrated it already, but the true Feast of Trumpets, because the calendar is out, will be next month, I was just saying. So let's talk a bit about that. And this particular uh, feast, you'll see the Word of God talks about it in chapter 23 of the book of Leviticus, and I'm reading from verse 23, I'm reading a few verses here, follow with me. As I read, it says here, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, 
and holy convocation. In other words, it is a dress rehearsal. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. And, and ye shall do no civil work therein. So it is a Sabbath in the week. Mm -hmm. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. All right. So they were to bring their special offerings to the Lord. Okay. So the Feast of Trumpets is also known by um, other names. There are idioms for this particular feast. Okay. Um, it's known as the day of blowing the trumpets or shofar. Um, the Hebrew word for trumpets is shofar. All right. Um, you know, like how um, a man may have several names. He could be a brother. He could be a husband. He could be a father. He could be a son. He could be a friend. Right. He could be a carpenter. It's all the same individual, but he's got all these different names. Right. The Feast of Trumpets is, is like that. It has these different names, but they're all important and we all got to understand what they're all about because if we take time to understand what these different names are and what they mean, it gives us a deeper understanding of what God is saying to us in the scriptures and about this particular appointment. Yes. All right? So, so it has, as I was saying, it has different names and because it has different names, it means it has different events. Mm -hmm. it, different events that will occur for example, we know Passover, um, what happened in the Passover where we know that they were to take a lamb and kill it, right? Yes? Yes? yes. yes? yes. So um, what happened the day the lamb died? I'm talking about Jesus now. He fulfilled that, did he not? Yes. Because John said, behold the lamb of God. Jesus fulfilled that. Jesus, the Bible said, Jesus fulfilled that and became the lamb, right? Yes. Glory to God. So, all these names are important. So, um, uh, meaning that for every one of these names, for the names of uh, the Feast of Trumpets or the Blowing of Trumpets, an event is going to take place. Yes. All right? Yes, and so, in other words, something is supposed to happen. All right? So, if you want to write this down for your own notes, I'll give it to you right now. Okay? These are the events that are supposed to happen on the Feast of Trumpet. In other words, it's known as not only as Feast of Trumpets, all right? In, in, in okay, so that you know this. Um, in, in Hebrew, it's known as Yom Terura, all right? Blown of Trumpets, right? Yom is day, right? Or Yom Kippur, you know, Day of Atonement. Amen. So uh, a day of blown trumpets. So, it is known as Jacob's Trouble. All right? Which, and we all know what Jacob's Trouble is. Well, if we have time, we'll talk about, a bit about that. That's tribulation. Yes. That's seven years of tribulation. I'm talking about Feast of Trumpet Saints. Okay? It's known as what? Jacob's Trouble. In other words, it's known that that will trigger it off. Yes. Right? Oh. It's also known as the Day of Awakening Blast. All right. In the Hebrew word for this is called natsel. The the uh, Greek word for this is harpazo. The English word or that comes from Latin we know it as rapture. Yeah. Y'all got this? Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's also known as the 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 Hebrew word is known as yom hadin, which means day of judgment. Think about it for a moment. I'm going to pause for a moment. Just remind you, before the Feast of Trumpet takes place, for 30 days prior to that, the Jewish people are blowing the trumpet every day, the shofar every day. It's a call to repentance. And during that month of Elul, the month before Tishri, it's not only is a call to repentance, they have fasting during that time period. Let, let me just set the context for you for a moment. All right. It was the same period when Moses went up into the mountain the second time and he spent the second time he went up 40 days and 40 nights in the mountain, not the first time, the second time. And when he came back down, it was known as the Yom Kippur, the day of Yom Kippur. 30 days prior to that plus 10 days brings you up to Yom Kippur. You're still with me? Okay. 
Let's back up a bit more. New Testament. That when Jesus went into the wilderness for 40 days to pray and fast, it was around this time. He spent the whole month of Allah, which was 30 days, in the wilderness praying and fasting. Okay? Plus an additional 10 days to make it 40 days. So on the 40th day, when Jesus, when the time of prayer and fasting was over, it was Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. That's why you read in the New Testament, when Jesus returned, he went straight into the synagogue, do you remember? And, and, and as their custom were, they would give him the, the scroll to read, and he located the scripture, and he said this, and, and he started to say, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Do you remember this? Because yes. he's anointed me to proclaim what? Liberty. Right? All right? To proclaim the year of the Lord. Remember all that? Guess what? That was a day of atonement. Okay? That was a day of atonement. So 30 plus 10 is 40. Right? 30. So, so what are the Jews doing before the day of atonement? 30 days, the month before Elo, they are praying, fasting on certain days. They're seeking God. The shofar is blowing every day. When it comes to the, the 30th Elo is finished, the beginning of Tishri, which is Feast of Trumpets, they blow the trumpets a hundred times, uh, the shofar. We'll talk about that in a moment. But, and, and it's, so on the Feast of Trumpets, they're saying 10 days to Yom Kippur, get your act together, this is my language. If you haven't been paying attention, if you haven't been seeking the Lord, if you haven't been repenting for the past 30 days, you got 30 day, you got 10 days left. Why? Because it is also known as, if you want to write this down, the opening of the books. It's the day when God opens the books. All right? Now, I'm just going to jump ahead. Oh, when the 10 days later, on the Day of Atonement, at the end of that day of prayer and fasting, the books are closed. All right? Understand? We have to, if we're going to understand, we have to go to the Hebrew perspective to understand some of these things because if we ignore the Hebrew you will not understand and you'll miss out okay so the books are open feast of trumpets by the time day of atonement arrives when that day is over that's why it's a day of prayer and fasting the books are closed in other words the books are open it's, it's also, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's known as uh, uh, Yom Hadin, the day of judgment. God is seen as he's about to pass judgment. Mm -hmm. All right? And the Israelites have 10 days to seek the Lord, get right with God. And the last day is prayer and fasting because the books are going to be closed. Decisions are going to be made and they're going to be sealed for the next 12 months. Yeah. It's serious. We are in a serious time. So, on the true calendar, we are actually in the month of Elah. We're actually in that time period where the shofar should be blown every day. People should be seeking God and leading up to the Feast of Trumpets. Is this making sense? Yes. All right. Okay. This day is also known as the opening of the gates. Okay. So, it's known as the opening of the books. And the opening of the gates, the gates open up. Why not? God wants to meet with his people. Amen. It's a holy convocation. All right. He wants to do something. Right. He wants. Yeah, exactly. He wants us to enter in. You, 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 you got it. Okay. So, so again, with all of these different idioms, with all these different names, these are events associated with them and they are going to happen. All right. In other words, these are all prophetic events that are going to happen. They may not happen all in the same one day. I don't think they're all going to happen in the same one day. God's not limited to that. But these events will be manifest, will unfold on some future Feast of Trumpets. Now, there are some things that happen every Feast of Trumpets. Day of Judgment, but, uh, opening of the books, opening of the gates. Have you seen this? Okay, but you're going to see the real thing play out. Because remember, all this is dress rehearsal, right? Okay, 
Okay, just as we saw the real thing played out was Jesus is the Lamb of God. In the Old Testament, they took a lamb on the Passover, they killed it, did they not? They applied the blood to the doorpost. What did we see hundreds of years later? Jesus, the true Lamb of God, showed up and they killed him. And as the blood was applied to the, in the Old Testament to the doorpost and to the lintel, hands, doorpost, dripping blood, he fulfilled all that. Every one of these I'm talking about, we're going to see the fulfillment of them. Right? Okay. Here's another one for the day of, for the Feast of Trumpet, Yom Teruah. It's called Yom HaKashet, which means also known as a hidden day. Interesting. A hidden day. Yes. Hallelujah. A hidden day. It's also known as ha kadishan which means um, the Hebrew word for that means a uh, wedding of Messiah right hallelujah hallelujah this month the true month or in call el -O, is also known as the, the the wedding of the bride mm -hmm. the Lord leads we'll talk about that at a later date okay and also feast of trumpets is also known as ha malek that's Hebrew meaning coronation of the Messiah. So in other words, you don't want to miss the saints on uh, some future feast of trumpets. The Messiah, Jesus, will be crowned. You don't want to miss it. I want to be there. Don't you want to see that? Yes. That's going to be an awesome day to be there. Right? So when we when, when we understand these different names for this particular feast, for this particular day, we now know these are all different events that are going to take place. And when we understand these names, it gives us a better appreciation for this day. There's more to it than what meets the eye. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So back when I was just talking about in, in Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 it talks about um, let them be for signs you know the, 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 the lights in the sky that, that comes from a Hebrew word called oath which means a signal like a flag in other words God will use them to signal us time wise to say it's time for this or it's time for you know for seasons not for winter summer or spring that's what it's about it, it, it's to do with Moed it's to do with the festivals it's to do with God's appointed times, His appointed days, His appointed years, right? His appointed festivals. What's interesting is that if you look at the um, the Islam religion, they use the lunar they use uh, for a calendar the lunar calendar. Um, the Hebrew um, the Jewish people they use solar and the lunar a combination because you see they're adding an extra month. They really should have been a lunar, right? And and you know we all use the Gregorian calendar, which came from the Julian Caesar's calendar be, be, be before that. But the point is, God has a calendar. All right? Man also has a calendar. All right? And, and the key is, we, if we are going to walk with God, according to Amos chapter 3, verse 3, the Bible says, can two walk together except they agree? we are going to have to get onto his calendar and understand his his appointments and make sure that we are showing up presenting ourselves on his timing yes it is a dress rehearsal until the real thing shows up Amen. but you know what if you do what is right when the real thing comes up you're not going to be caught off guard are y'all seeing this you're not going to be caught off guard okay the enemy does not want you to know god's calendar Right? Know that. Go with me to Daniel chapter 7 for a moment. Daniel chapter 7. Hallelujah. You there? Daniel chapter 7. I'm reading verse 25. Verse 25 is talking about the Antichrist. Recently we were talking about him a bit from the scriptural perspective that spirit right but that as we know from the biblical studies um, that spirit has been around for a long time yes Amen. right okay this is what it says in verse 25 
It says, I'm Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. This is the Antichrist. And he shall wear out the saints of the Most High. In other words, he, he will have the... The saints are not going to prevail against him during the tribulation days. All right? I know movies would tell you otherwise, but go back to the scriptures. All right? Okay? And think to change times and laws. Do you see that? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay? Now, when, when, when you see the word times here, it's coming from the Hebrew word moed, yeah. which means divine appointments. Yeah. Right? It's just back to what we just read in Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. Okay? That's what that's about. Laws. That's referring to the Torah. That's referring to the Word of God. Right? And, and I know often when we, when we, we uh, look at the... When, if we hear the word Torah, we tend to think it's the first five books of the Bible. Right? Yeah. Right? Genesis, right? Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. We say from English it's the law, but Torah means more than that. Torah means actually teach it. Yeah. From a Hebrew literal translation, it means uh, teach it. All right. Yeah. So, so what the scripture verse is saying is that he will wear out the saints, the Most High, and think to change the times. In other words, God's appointed times and laws, the teachings, the Word of God, yeah. and they shall be given into His hand a time and times and divide enough time. In other words, when the Antichrist, sorry, when the devil himself is cast out of the second heaven, down to planet earth, that will be halfway through the seven years of tribulation, where it says time, that's one year, times, that's two years, that's one plus two is three and a half, that's three and a half years, the last three and a half years, is when he is going to embody a, the Antichrist, the human being, yes. and he's going to take full possession of that individual, and he's going to wreak havoc on planet Earth because he knows his time is short. He's only got about three and a half years left. Do you see that? Okay, so the bottom line is that you, I want you to see his goal, he, think, he, he, he has changed time. Yes. Amen? And he's going to change time. Yes. And therefore, because he's changed it up so much, unless you're really into the scriptures, unless you're really seeking the Lord, yeah. you won't have, most people will not have any idea that the Lord is coming. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Do you see this? Yeah. That's why you can, you, you can meet a lot of professing Christians and, you know, their conversation, their priority, their conversation is not the Lord is coming, it's about something else. When if you understand the time that we're in and you see what is going on, you can't help but want to talk about the Lord is coming. Because you see what is happening, you have eyes to see, and that is a priority. Nothing else really matters. What matters is getting ready and being prepared. But others, they've got other priorities because they don't see it. And we can understand why they don't see it because they've been blinded to the truth. Right? You have to realize it had to be an antichrist spirit that caused the Jewish people to change up the calendar to add an extra month. Yeah. Are, are you seeing that? The spirit that's behind it. Yeah. Yes. Right? I mean, you, you can read about it if you want to research it. There's a man called Moses. Not Moses in the Bible, another man, and you know, and you, you can read the history how that all came about, but you know that there was a spirit behind it. And yes, good intentions was meant, but really just deviating from God's way of doing things. Yes? Amen. So we read in, in Leviticus chapter 23 about the blowing of the shofar. Let's, let me go back there for a moment. And we see here um, in verse 24, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing the, the trumpets and holy convocation. In other words, blowing the shofar, a memorial. Well, when we look at the word memorial, it means, it comes from a Hebrew word called zakah, which means to, to remind. In other words, to set up, to remind, right? Yeah. Um, 
it, it, like, like a memento. In, 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 in other words, to be like a reminder. Like every year the shofars are to be blown, hallelujah, as a reminder of these other events that I've just talked talk to you about, what is going to happen. Are you seeing this? Yes. Okay. Hallelujah. I like the one that's called the Day of the Awakening Blast. You see, if I pause here for a moment, all throughout this year, and in particular even last year when COVID hit, we have been looking at the scriptures, the end times of what is going to occur, right? Mm -hmm. We have been looking at, um, it's time to get ready and prepared for the Lord is coming. We have looked at all kinds of rapture scenarios, have we not? Yes. And the Bible is full of them, all kinds of rapture scenarios. And they're all there because they're all telling a story. Mm -hmm. But if you can think about it this way, you know, like a, a, an hourglass, it's like it's wide at the top here and it comes narrow here, right? You still with me? Yes. It's, it's like when it, at the wide part, you've seen all of this, but now that we're down to the narrow part, we're coming down to the narrow part, God is narrowing it right down and letting you know, line upon line, precept upon precept, here's the truth. Uh, you would have to go through all these to come to this. You can't really jump all of these other scenarios and come to this because you wouldn't have an appreciation for this. Are you, are you seeing me? Yeah. Are you seeing this? We looked at Pentecost. There was a rapture scenario there. Yes. There's even a rapture scenario with Passover and yes. all of that. Yes. Right? Yes. Actually, there's a rapture scenario in all of them if you really look at them. Do we ignore them? No. We're supposed to keep watching. Right? Yeah. But line upon, you, you know, the, script, the scripture tells us that revelation is progressive. Mm -hmm. It's iterative. Mm -hmm. as, you, as, you, as, as light comes and you latch onto that, and God sees you're hungry, he'll add more. Mm -hmm. He'll add more. And he'll add more. And he'll eventually bring you to where he wants you to. Right. All right? I, I want you all to see, I'm not sure how far we get today, but I want you to really consider. Um, What's going on with Feast of Trumpets? Let me just reiterate those names again, what it's also known for, so you can get the sense of it, the importance of it. Okay? Jacob's Trouble. Okay? Day of Awakening Blast. The Hebrew word is Natsal. Right? The Greek word is what? Harpazo. The Latin word is Rapture, or we English word, right? Okay? Yom Hadin, Day of Judgment, Opening of Books, Opening of Gates, uh, Yom Hakashe, Hidden Day, right? Uh, Hakadishin, uh, uh, Wedding of Messiah, Hamalek, Coronation of the Messiah. Oh, can you see that? Come on, Even those, all those names put together, they're, they're telling you a story. Yeah. Like, no other rapture scenarios that we've looked at. Praise the Lord. It's telling you a story. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. So now we're talking about memorial. Okay? We're talking about the Hebrew word zakah. It means uh, like a memento. Like, you know, like if you have, um, like in our living room, we've got wedding pictures of when Pastor Fem and myself got married. It's a memento of the day we got married, that particular day. Right? It's like birthdays or mementos. You, you've got to say, you know, it's, it's, it's to remind you of something. Right? And so, uh, God, let me put it this way. If God doesn't remember you, you're in trouble. You need to be in a position where God remembers you. You remember when the Noah's flood took place? And after the 40 days and 40 nights of rain, yeah. and after a while, the Bible says, and God remembered who? Noah. Noah. Oh, it's the same Hebrew word, zakah. You want God to remember you. Amen. Right? Amen. Okay. God, God wants his children to remember. There's something special about this day, the Feast of Trumpets. Okay? Remember, it's a, it's a memorial for blowing of trumpets, a memorial blowing of shofars. Because if God doesn't remember you, it means that he's rejected you. You're in trouble. 
All right? And, and, you, you, and you don't want that. Look, go with me to Luke chapter 13 for a moment. You, you, you need to remember God so that God will remember you. All right? Because if you have forgotten God, and a lot of folks have, a lot of folks have disconnected from God. Um, this past year and three quarters of a year, I mean, almost two years, um, when you think some Christians should be drawn closer to God, they haven't. It should have been a wake-up call. The, mo the moment they found out there's a, a worldwide plague, pandemic, should have been a wake-up call for people to draw closer to God and realize, I need to draw close to God. This is end times. Some are still disconnected. Some are still comfortable being disconnected. They don't get it. Right? Okay? Are you there? Luke chapter 13? Hallelujah. Let me read a few verses that Jesus speaks here. We're talking about being remembered. But if you want God to remember you, you're going to have to remember Him. Okay? That's the way it works. Okay? Okay? What does Jesus say here? Luke chapter 13, verse 24. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house has risen up and has shut to the door, and he begin to and, and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. I don't know you. You're in trouble if God doesn't remember you. Okay? I know not whence ye are. The old English, verse 26. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunken in thy presence, and thou hast taught, and thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence you are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquities. Iniquity. That's how God sees it. Verse 28 says, There shall be what? Weeping and, I tell you, saints, as soon as the rapture is over, and it's going to be instantaneously, once that trump stops blowing, you're going to see verse 28 kick in. There shall be what? Weeping and gnashing of teeth. When ye shall see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves thrust out. It's going to be too late. The master has risen up and the door is shut. You need God to remember you. Every one of us. You need to be in a relationship with him. Can't stress that too much. Right? Right? You go, you go with me to Numbers chapter 10. This should be familiar with all of us because every time we lift up our first fruits, we always go to this scripture to remind you that it's scriptural to blow over our offerings. Yes? Numbers chapter 10. We're looking at this Hebrew word called zakah, which means uh, to, you know, remember. Numbers chapter 10. The word of God says here, And if you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresses you, then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, or shofar, and ye shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and ye shall be saved with your you shall be saved from your enemies. Well, we always go to verse 10, it says, you know, blown it over our shofar, over our offerings, right? But what what what, what is God saying here? You blow the shofar, you are going to be remembered. Yeah. Right? Right? In other words, blowing the shofar, God is saying, I will remember you. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Glory, Glory to God. You see this similar in Malachi chapter 3. Hallelujah. You know what? I see today's teaching ministry as laying a foundation and we're not going to cover all what we need to cover today but this is a foundation to where i believe god wants to take us this weekend all right okay everybody there malachi malachi chapter 
three is where I'm heading. These are not unfamiliar verses. Malachi chapter three, we see the same Hebrew word showing up again. And I'm reading from verse 16. It says, then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another and the Lord hearkened and heard it and the book of remembrance, there it is. See remembers? That's a Hebrew word there, right? Yeah. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Whenever you, if you fear the Lord and you think about his name, it's been recorded. Amen. 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 They shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in the day, in that day when I make up my jewels, Amen. I will spare them. Glory to God. You want God to spare you when he comes for you, when he comes to the church, right? Yes. As a man spares his own son that serveth him. You know that you need God to remember you. Mm -hmm. Every, hey, glory to God. If, glory to God. God. Hallelujah. Glory. Verse 18. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked. Between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. God remembered Noah. You need God to remember you. We all need God to remember us. That's why we see in Leviticus chapter 23, it's a, it's a, it's a day of blowing the, the shofar, blowing the trumpet. It's a, it's a day of memorial as we do this in rehearsal. Glory to God, not only over our offerings, but just, just being obedient to God. He is going to remember you. Praise he you. is going to remember us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In, 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 in Judaism, this is what they say. The same day when um, uh, um, Do you remember this? This is what they teach in Judaism. You know, remember the story of when Abraham, Abraham took Isaac up to Mount Moriah and he was going to uh, offer him as a sacrifice. In fact, he did. He really did. He was just about to plunge a knife into him when he got interrupted. Um, is that, that God hears the ram's horn on that day Yom Tururah. In other words, when people are doing exactly what God says, blow the shofar, blow the trumpets, right? This is what they teach, that, that when God hears the shofar being blown, he leaves the seed of judgment and goes to the seed of mercy and forgiveness. I like that. Okay? The Lord knows those who are his. All right? He knows those who are his. Right? And... And Abraham didn't kill Isaac that day. No. But there was a ram that was caught in the thicket that God had provided. And we all know the story. The ram was offered, but the horn was taken and made into a trumpet, made into a shofar. And henceforth, we've got the ram's horn. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. And Glory. when it's blown, God says, I'll remember you. Numbers chapter 10. If you if the enemy is attacking you and you blow the shofar, I will what? Remember you. It, it, when you blow an alarm, I will remember you. You blow it over your offerings, it will come up to me as a, as a memorial. We didn't read verse 10, but you, you can go back and read it for yourself. In other words, the blowing of the shofar causes God to remember us. Amen. I like that. Glory to God. And, and you can see that from Malachi, he says, if I remember you, you'll be like a precious jewel to me. And I will, what, I, I put it, this is my own words, I'll spare you. I'll protect you. you I'll keep you. you. I'll preserve you. you I'll, I'll go to my way to make sure, because God knows those who are his. You, you know, as a man who has a, 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 some treasures, he's going to, if, if you've got treasures, you don't keep your treasures amongst the common stuff. You separate it, do you not? Right? If you've got diamonds, if you've got gold, if you've got anything of value in your home, you separate it from the common stuff. Yes. Right? And you ensure that it's going to be protected. So to the point you might even put it in a safety deposit box just for, for added protection. Uh -huh. But the point is you don't keep it with normal stuff. Yeah. Same way when God sees us, says, you're precious to me. 
I remember you. You, you want God to remember you, saints. That's the bottom line. I'm going to conclude in a moment, at least this part. But if you go with me to Numbers chapter 29, Hallelujah. Numbers chapter 29. We see again here um, in verse 1, similar to what we just read in Leviticus chapter 23. And it says, And in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no civil work. It is a day of blowing the trumpets unto you. In other words, it's Yom Teruah. Okay? Do you, do, you, do you all see that? Amen. And, and, and so, terura means, now that the Hebrew word for this, when you look up this word, and if you, go in, if you want to go any further, the strong concordance is 8643, if those of you are into that, it means blowing, mm -hmm. it means battle cry, Come on. it means acclamation of joy, mm -hmm. it means blow an alarm, mm -hmm. it means a clamor of trumpets, it means a shout to rejoice. Mm -hmm. It means trumpets. Mm -hmm. So, hallelujah. Yes, I like that. We're, we're, we are going home. So, I'm going to pause there because I think that's a good place just to, 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 to pause. Because as we go further, you will see, now that I've laid a bit of foundation, keep this in mind, blowing, battle cry, acclamation of joy, blown alarm, clamor of trumpets, shout to rejoice, trumpet, you will see that these are key words that we will want to see in the scriptures. We want to see the word alarm. We want to see the word trumpet. We want to see the word shouting in other scriptures. And you will see, I will show you, I will attempt to show you that many of the scriptures where you see these words, particularly if you go back to the Hebrew, it's all pointing back to the feast of trumpets. Hallelujah. It's all pointing back to the Feast of Trumpets. I'll close with this. Let me just jump ahead for a moment. You're very familiar with this. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We'll go to the New Testament for a moment. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. You're familiar with this verse, verse 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend with, from heaven with a shout, right? With the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Right? Yeah. Okay. So you're familiar with this particular verse, yes? Amen. And you'll see... Um, uh, Shout, remember? Yeah. Um, trumpet, yeah. which is the shofar. Yeah. Um, you'll see all this um, shout is like the coming from the Hebrew word teruro. Yes, this is written in Greek, but when you map it back, you'll see it's actually quoting one of the Psalms, and you'll see, I'll show you as we continue as the Lord leads, it's all about this word terura. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Trumpet is shofar. Mm -hmm. So in other words, this verse is all talking about the Feast of Trumpets. And other scripture verses we'll, we will take a look at and we'll, we'll, we'll go forward and we'll see all that because we need to have a good understanding of the importance of this particular feast. It's not like the others and it's not yet been fulfilled. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us uh, stop there. And we'll continue as the Lord leads. Because all this ties together. Oh, praise God. Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's stand. I trust that you received today. I trust that this help maybe clear up some things or the intent is to lay a foundation for some other scriptures that will come we'll tie it together and we'll get a better understanding 
of what the Feast of Trumpets is all about. It's the next feast to be fulfilled. Jesus has fulfilled um, the first four. And there may still be some more work that he wants to do with those first four. But they're all being fulfilled in a prophetic order. Look at it this way, saints. The first four feasts, which are spring, Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, Pentecost, they all speak of the first advent of Christ. Can you see that? The last three Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement, Feast of Tabernacles, they speak of the second advent of Christ. We know, we go back to this, first four, Christ came. Has he not? Yes. He's coming back again. Yes. These last ones will speak about he's coming back again. Amen. It's the trump that's going to trigger the whole thing yeah. off. Hallelujah. We didn't get into that, but we'll talk about that. All right? Okay, so think about that. First four, he's come. Second last, the last three is his second advent. And when I say the second advent, you can look at it this way. The second advent starts off with the rapture and it ends with the second return of Christ Jesus seven years later. Got it? Yeah. This is exciting. Amen. This is exciting. When you begin to understand this, you, 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 you're going to, you, this is exciting. You're going to see. We got something, we got a glorious future coming up. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. First advent of Christ, he's come. Amen. The Jews missed him. He's coming back a second time. Come on. And guess what? They're going to miss him again a second time. I'm talking about the rapture. Hallelujah. And when he comes at the end of the second, seven years later, the whole world is going to know. I tell you what, the whole world is going to know about Jesus when he comes for the church. <laughs> it's not going to be done in secret. He, there's going to be a display of God's glory. It's going to be a shock for those who don't know him. And they're going to, whether they want to admit it or not, but they'll have realized that Jesus is real. Amen. Jesus is alive. And we're not in this universe by ourselves as so many people would have you to believe. Amen. And that we're, we're our, a God to ourselves. No, every one of us have been created and we have a God to answer to. Yes. Yes. Glory. Jesus. Jesus is coming. Are you ready? I trust you're prepared. If you're not, get ready, get prepared and stay ready because he's about to show up. Amen? Amen. We're about to leave. Amen. Glory to God. In fact, you should be on board already. You should already have your the final boarding call has gone out. You should be on. You should be sitting seated, ready to go. Every one of us should be ready to go. And if you're not, still a little bit of time, but not much left. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the truth of your words today. I pray, Lord, that you would. The truth of your words, you'll cause it to sink deep into every one of our spirits. I pray you continue to speak to us about the urgency and the time that we're in and the season that we're in. That you would speak to everyone individually and collectively that would hear this message. And I pray anyone who is not yet right ready or quite ready, that by the going forth of this word today, that you will give them spiritual understanding. And you cause them to repent and give their lives over to you completely and yield it over to you so that your will can be done in their lives. So that when you come for the church, they will be ready and prepared to meet you in the air. Oh, Lord, and we don't have to go through tribulation. Lord, draw every one of us unto yourself and perfect every one of us, I pray. Perfect that which concerneth us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.